Greetings and welcome. My name is Aaron Craig with Beyond Us Games, and in this part of Learning Game Maker Language, we are going to be looking at loops. Loops are a way to iterate over a section of code a certain number of times, and that can be one to two times or 10,000 times. Anywhere in between, it's you who gets to tell the loop how many times to do this. Game Maker Studio has several different types of loops, and I'm just going to show them to you really quick, and then I'm going to show you how to use, in my opinion, the most versatile and useful loop that I find myself using in programming during Game Maker. So, the first kind is a repeat loop. This is one that Game Maker Studio has created to be simple and easy to use. It looks like this, repeat, expression, statement. Now, an expression is simply something that will either evaluate to true or false. So in this case, it says repeat five. So you give it a number and it says, have I repeated this five times? If not, continue doing it. If I have, then exit. And if it has not, it'll continue to run this code, which is the statement. And if it has, then it will just be done. It also has a while loop. Now this loop is very dangerous because it's possible to put an expression in here that will never evaluate to false. Now if this happens, it will go into an infinite loop. It will go into something that says this is going to go on forever and Game Maker is going to realize it and it's going to throw a system error and your game will crash. So a while loop is very powerful, but you have to set it up inside of the statement whether it continues or stops. And that can be difficult because sometimes it can create an infinite loop if you don't know exactly what you're doing. And then we move on to the do until, or as I know it, the do while loop. Very similar to the while, except that it will guarantee to run at least once. If you look at while loop, uh, it checks the expression first. So it says, if this is true, then no longer do... So it checks the expression first, and if this is true, it'll go, but if it is false, it won't, and then it won't actually run any of the code at all. A do while loop, or do until, is a way to guarantee that this will happen first, and then it will check to see if it's still true or false. And the last kind that I use most is a for loop. Now it is the most complicated to look at because it has three statements and an expression, and when you're just starting out looking at loops, this one uh, is confusing, but it is also the most powerful because it allows you to create a variable in it, which you can see here, and then check it against an expression, change that variable, and then do this statement, this, this chunk of text. So it's really awesome, and that's what I want to show you this time. But those are the four loops that Game Maker provides, and when you just begin with loops, just like I did, it might be kind of confusing as to why they are useful. When I first heard of them, all I could think of was, why would I want to do the same thing over and over a hundred times? But that's the wrong question, because it's more like, what can I accomplish by doing almost the same thing a hundred times in a row? Because the key is that inside of a loop, a little thing changes each and every time it runs. So let me go ahead and show you this. First we're going to create an object, we're going to say obj loop. We're going to add an event with create. And now what I want to do is first show you the for loop in a very simple thing. So first we're going to type out for, we're going to do i equals zero, and we need to do semicolon in there to distinguish between the expressions and statements. We're going to say i is less than five, so as long as that is evaluating to true, the for loop will continue. And we're going to increment i by 1 with the plus plus. Now inside of here, I'm just going to use the show message function. I'm going to say hello. We're going to go into our room. We're going to take out functions. And we're going to throw in this loop. And I'm going to run it. Now this message will come up five different times because it's going to go through. So one, two, three, four, five. And we get that message five times, and then the game starts. Now that in and of itself does not appear very useful. But let me show you something that can be useful. If we created 
a number up here, or if we are accessing a variable outside of this loop, uh, let's say number equals zero, and then let's say we're going to show this message of number, but every time we're inside of here, we're actually going to say number plus equals two. So this number is going to change every single time this loop gets run. So the first time is zero, second time is two, four, six, eight. So inside of this chunk of code, you can alternate things. Things can change and begin to be useful beyond just showing the exact same message over and over again. Because doing the exact same thing over and over may not be very useful. There are a couple of cases where it might be, but most of the time you will find that you need to change the code inside of here, change the variable you're working with to then do something extremely useful. So some of the examples that I use in my gaming is I can actually use a for loop to pause the game, and I'll show you that here. So inside of the game I'm working on, I can use a variable called instance count that GameMaker has that has all of the active instances running on the level. And then if I use a for loop, I can get all of those into one of my variables, then I can pause the game and redraw everything so it looks like nothing has changed and yet the game is completely paused and I can show like a start screen or a menu or something else inside of the game. Using a for loop I can access every single active instance and do something with their code. If you were to do that by hand, well for one it might almost be impossible but for sure it would be tedious if you had to type out every single instance in the level because as games get larger, more and more instances are in the level. Now, another thing you can do is assigning experience after a battle. If you fight a battle, uh, say in a turn-based combat, then you want to give every single character in your party experience. Well, you can use a loop for that. So you just type out the code once. You say, uh, player one receives this much experience and this item. And then inside of a for loop, you can actually say, change it to then give it to player two and they get this much experience and player three gets that and player four gets that so that you don't have to type out every single line of code for all four players because that becomes big and tedious and annoying and also prone to errors and typos. Loops are vital to game development. Once you begin doing more complex things you will realize that there are so many things that you cannot do without a loop. Loops and arrays like we've already talked about, also go hand in hand. They are together so very powerful for doing a number of things. And we'll get into that as I show some more examples later on down the road. That's all I've got for you today though. Thank you for joining me. I hope this was helpful. Uh, as always, have fun making great games and I will talk to you later. Hey there. Uh, I've got a Patreon, if you didn't know. If you'd like to support me, that would be great. Up on the screen are the people who are pledging enough to get their name in the credits. They are helping fund this YouTube channel, which is awesome. I just want to give a shout out to them and all that they do to help me do this. It's great. If you would like to join, uh, you can click on the link at the end of the video or in the description below. Thank you.